Oh, is that? Okay. I don't have to do it? No, you can do it if you want. <laughs> okay, well then we'll then rest, right? For me, it's a pleasure to introduce Fedor Fomin from the University of Bergen. Uh, Fedor did his PhD in the St. Peter's St. University, yes? Yes, St. Peter's okay. In Russia. And after he got a position of assistant professor in the same university, uh, in 2000, he moved to Chile for almost uh, one year, and then to Czech Republic, and then to Germany, and finally, from 2002, he has a permanent position in the University of Bergen. So now, uh, Fedor is a leading researcher in parameterized algorithms, so it's the topic of the lecture for Fedor for this occasion. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Martin. Yes. Uh, just uh, to be sure that, uh, can you see from there? Yes, yeah. so, so. We don't need to put it. No. And can you see from there? Okay. Then uh, my lectures will be on parameterized algorithms, and the first lecture is called Introduction. But actually, uh, all five lectures will be very introductory things. I will just uh, try to explain a little bit what is the area, and just give some examples of what kind of problems and what kind of techniques occur in the area. Okay, so usually we deal with NP-hard or NP-complete problems. And uh, the usual story, what we know, if you have an NP-hat problem on hands, what we know, that there's no algorithm solving this problem, right? What's, but maybe a little bit more, right? So basically, what does it mean that the problem is NP-hat? There's no algorithm solving this problem on all instances, optimally, and in polynomial time. And this is the picture from the... Uh, classical book of Gary Johnson and basically the story there is that uh, you work in some company and your boss gave you the problem and you cannot solve the problem and then you prove that the problem is NP-complete and then you argue, look, I cannot solve the problem, all these other people didn't solve the problem and this is what happened in 1970s, uh, people start working with the NP-complete problems but uh, yes, so this is a nice uh, theory, but still uh, these problems exist around us, so how to solve them? And actually, uh, when we speak about hard problem, uh, no algorithm solves the problem on all instances, but maybe we can do something about easy instances, right? Sometimes life is not so bad for us. Uh, then, uh, but what are the easy instances? So how to capture the notion, what is an easy instance? And basically, uh, if you look from the point of view of philosophy, parameterized complexity is the area of algorithms and complexity, which try to explain or try to identify what is easy instance, nothing else. Okay, so, and uh, when we start uh, study algorithms, uh, we always uh, evaluate the running time of the algorithms at the function of the input size or a bit size if we're doing complexity. But is it really true that uh, the bit size of the input uh, really affects the running time of the algorithm? Yes, sometimes it's true, but in many cases, like for example, when we teach or when we learn breadth first search or depth first search, we always say that this is a linear time algorithm and the running time actually is not in the bit size of the input. It's the number of vertices plus the number of ages, for example, right? So this is matter. When we speak about subset sum, so subset sum is the following problem. I have a set of integers and I have one integer t and I ask if there is a subset of integers which sum up to this number t, right? This is an NP-complete problem, but also the dynamic programming algorithm solve this problem in times n power t. And we always say, well, when t is polynomial, the running time of the algorithm is also polynomial. Right? So it's a, when we speak about k sat, so we have a satisfiability formula where every clause is, has at most k variables. So this uh, formula is known to be solvable in exponential time, but the exponential running time, after people are doing quite a lot of research here, this exponential running time is 2 power n 
times 1 minus 1 over k. So when k becomes larger and larger, this thing goes to 2 to the n. But for small k, like k3, this much faster than 2 to the n. That's exponentially faster. Or, for example, uh, k click, when I uh, give you a graph and I ask you if there is a click with at least k vertices, click in the set of vertices pairwise adjacent to each other. Then I can solve the click in time n power k plus 2. And this time, if I'm looking for, so this is again an NP-complete problem, but when I'm looking for a click of size 5 in a graph, this is a polynomial problem, right? So it's not always uh, the size of the input which rules the complexity of the problem. Sometimes there are other things. Okay, and uh, the, again, the idea of parameterized complexity, so I want to measure the running time of algorithm as a function of its size and something else. What could be the something else? Uh, this uh, we will discuss a lot during this lecture. And uh, parameterized complexity, it's originally started and originally applied to NP-hat problems. But uh, if you take this philosophy, you can apply it not only to NP-hat problem, but to polynomial time solvable problem. You can apply this to approximation algorithms. And this is actually what's happening now. So it's, uh, yes, let me start with the example. Example, vertex cover. So I have a gr input graph G and the integer K. And I ask if there is a vertex set in a graph of size at most K, such that every H has at least one endpoint in this set. So that's why it's called vertex cover. I'm asking for the set of vertices which covers or hits all the edges in the graph. Right? This is a classical NP-complete problem. And uh, the, if I am using trivial brute force algorithm, I just try all subsets in a graph. And for each, when, when you give me the set of vertices, I can check in polynomial time if this is a vertex cover or a not. So I do brute force, running time 2 to the n. Right? This is a... One approach, okay, then I can say, if I'm looking for a set of vertices uh, of size k, I just don't have to try all subsets. I just can try all sets of size k or less, right? And for each of the sets, again, try uh, if it's vertex cover, then I will get something of uh, like n power k plus 2 algorithm. Well, and this algorithm is polynomial for every fixed k. So, and, so, and uh, very often people use, uh, in parameterized complexity, people use jargon. It's called XP. And uh, actually, I tried to, to ask many people or people who, why it's XP and uh, why it's called XP. And people say that's because it's slice-wise polynomial. This makes sense. But not really, right? Why XP is slice-wise polynomial? Yes, it's, uh, yeah. You know, slice-wise sli polynomial, it, uh, it makes sense, right? It means that for every fixed k, the algorithm is polynomial. But why it's, but xp, yes, just uh, probably for that. Yes, uh, so this is, uh, so slice-wise polynomial, so it's for, it's running time f of k times n power some function of k, right? So for every fixed k, this is still polynomial time algorithm. And let me just give another algorithm, completely different, which solves vertex cover in times n plus m plus some exponential function of k. So this is a folklore algorithm. It's attributed to Sam Booth. Uh, and I say before 193 because this algorithm was never published, but in some uh, consecutive papers it was referred as a bus algorithm. So probably there was some private communication. So what the algorithm is doing? Again, I want, to f I want to decide if my graph contains a vertex cover of size at most k. So here k is now becomes very important. What I'm doing? So if I have a vertex of degree k, this vertex must be in the solution. Right? So why not? If this vertex doesn't go to the solution, then all these edges should be covered by its neighbors which means that I immediately exceed uh, my budget, right? So this work should go to the solution. So what I can do, I can uh, then, uh, if I know this, so I, I know that every vertex of degree more than k should go into the solution. So what I'm doing, I just can delete this vertex and decrease the budget by one, right? This is a fair rule. Okay, the, and the second uh, uh, reduction rule which I have, is if I have a vertex of degree zero, this vertex is completely useless, right? Because it doesn't cover anything, I just can remove it for free. Delete this vertex. Now I have a graph. 
So I, after I apply this reduction rule, I reduce my graph to an instance where every vertex is of degree at most k. Right? And that's already quite a lot because uh, information. Because if I know that my graph contains more than k square edges, I would say no, right? Why? Right? So every vertex in my graph is of, of degree at most k, right? So every vertex covers at most k edges. So if I have more than k square edges, I cannot cover. It's a no instance, right? So I immediately say no. And if my graph uh, has at most k square edges, just because I don't have isolated vertices, it's easy to see that this graph cannot have more than two k square vertices. Right? So I, I did a very simple thing, right? I just look at the degree of the vertex and then I delete this vertex and change the parameter. Very simple reduction. And then, so when I have this, in, now when I have reduced instance, the reduced instance is equivalent to the original one, right? So I can solve the problem in the reduced instance and then find solution in the original one. But because the reduced instance has at most two to the k square vertices, I just can do brute force try all possible combinations uh, and uh, in this running time I can solve the problem. Right? So, so the natural question is uh, that was quite easy. Can I do even better? Well, I cannot hope to get a better running time in terms of uh, number of vertices and number of ages, right? Because it's already linear, right? And even to read the problem I need this time. But maybe I can do something better when I look at the function of k. Okay, so what, uh, let's uh, take another look at the problem. So if I have an edge in a graph, I know for sure that at least one of its endpoints, maybe two, but definitely not zero, should be in the solution. Yes, uh, so I know that uh, g has a vertex cover of size at most k. This means that uh, either g minus u has a vertex cover of size at most k minus 1. Or g minus v has a cover of size at most k minus 1, right? At least one of u or v should go into the solution. So I just branch. And this is a recursive algorithm, right? So at every step of the algorithm, I look at if there is an edge, I branch into two sub-problems, right? One is a one endpoint goes to the vertex cover and the other vertex goes to the vertex cover. So what is the running time of this algorithm? Well, I, every time, so I have a branching tree. The depth of this uh, recursion is at most k, right? Because every time, at every step of the recursion, I decrease parameter by one, right? So I cannot, so if I go below, uh, if the depth is more than k and there are still uh, edges uh, here, it means that it's a no instance, right? So, okay, so this is a tree with, uh, of depth k and uh, the degree of the tree, uh, our branching degree is at most two or exactly two. So this means that the height of the recursion, so the, the, the total number of leaves in this tree, which is proportional to the running time of the uh, algorithm, is two to the k times some polynomial. Like in each node? Yep. In each node, you, you pick any edge? If there is, yes, I pick any edge, arbitrary. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, and I forgot to say, definitely, if you don't understand something, interrupt me, ask questions, right? Because uh, otherwise, look, it's, it's very natural, I'm speaking. Right? And if I don't hear any feedback from you, what I think, right? That you understand everything. I become, uh, and it's boring for you, right? So I speed up, speed up, and if you don't understand something, you are lost completely, right? So just don't, just try to slow me down, ask questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, you, I take any, I, I take any H and, uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, so I pick up an H, I branch on two subgraphs, two subproblems, and I continue recursively there. So at the end, I, I will have uh, a lot of uh, subproblems, right? But at not, uh, but at most two to the k of them, right? Uh, it, it's some polynomial. So I, I just uh, because uh, again, so uh, because uh, the number of uh, uh, leaves or the number of vertices in this tree is two to the k, right? But every time when you do some work, when you, you have to pick up to find an edge. You have to the, rewrite the new problems. This takes polynomial time. So this is, I, I write n to the c some polynomial time happening there. But uh, I don't want to specify it right now because in the next slide that will be apparent that I don't care about this polynomial time and I will explain why. Because what's happening? 
Okay, so this is the algorithm of uh, 2 to the k n to the c, and this is the algorithm of uh, uh, Fellows and Downey. And again, so the algorithm looks completely simple, but if you look at the story how it was developed, uh, it, it took some time to discover this algorithm because initially people were speaking about graph minus and there was some terrible algorithm which running time was not constructive in, in terms of k. And then after some work, so Downey and Fellows realized that the running time of this, of, there's an algorithm of running time to, to the k and to the c. And then some years after, they found a book of Kurt Wilhelm where this was an exercise. So you see, so even this simple algorithm, it takes a, a lot of uh, time to, okay. Let me just uh, try to see, uh, now I have two methods to, to design algorithm for vertex cover. One is uh, the bus reduction rule. I pick up a degree and then the branching, right? And uh, what I can do, so I, I, again, I, I take the first algorithm. It's kind of pre-processing, it doesn't hurt, right? So I uh, decrease, uh, I, I construct a graph with a small vertex degree. So, and I do it in linear time. And then I have a graph, uh, some, uh, I have some new instance. So here I have a new graph and the parameter k prime and the parameter can be smaller than k because uh, we also, when we um, re do, do this reduction, we can decrease the parameter, right? When we put the vertex in the, into the vertex cover. This small number of edges, but then I apply to this instance, this algorithm. And because now n, the number of vertices is, uh, becomes order of k, I have algorithm of running time linear, linear, two to the k and some polynomial of k. Right? So this is a two simple ideas, put them together and I start, I, I, I really don't care about polynomial time anymore here. Does it make much thing? So, okay, so now I have uh, one problem. I have three algorithms. Which algorithm is better or how to compare these algorithms? So one algorithm is n power k plus two, the second algorithm two to the k times n plus m, and uh, this, and here I have additive n plus m plus two to the k. So each of these algorithms is a polynomial time algorithm for fixed k, right? So what's the difference between them? So one is x key, x, x key, and if you stare a little bit at this polynomial, or at this running time. It's very strange, right? So what happens, so, so if I have a k here equal to two, then it's n to the four. k equal to three, then n, n to the five, right? When k grows, the exponent in the polynomial grows. If I look uh, at k equal to two here, this becomes a constant, and the running time of the algorithm is linear, n plus m. If I take k equal to 10, 2 to the 10 is still a constant, right? And then the running time is linear. Even if I take k uh, equal to 1 million, well, I will not be able to compute this. But still, if you speak about running time, or asymptotic running time, this will be linear. So it's very strange, right? So we have two algorithms. One algorithm, both algorithms are polynomial. But one algorithm, uh, so the exponent of the polynomial grows with a parameter. And the second uh, algorithm is always linear. This somehow took, uh, at least to me, uh, some time, because when I started reading read, uh, this uh, papers uh, um, uh, in uh, like a prehistoric time, in 1980s, people were speaking about cubic algorithm, for example, Robertson and Seymour. They always say, we design cubic algorithm for an p-complete problem. And this somehow, some, it took some time to understand what they mean, right? So, but now I can say I have a linear time algorithm for an p-complete problem. Right? So there's a, uh, but, uh, uh, so, so, so there is a difference. And this type of running time, so when uh, the exponential explosion depends only on, 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 on the parameter and it doesn't depend on the input length, it's called fixed parameter tractable. Uh, in, in jargon, FPT, and always uh, every person, every normal, well, maybe not anymore, right? Because when I was a kid, you, people always mess up it with FTP, but, uh, Maybe uh, it's not anymore, right? But still, it's FPT, right? Not FTP. <laughs> Fixed parameter tractable algorithm. The problem and uh, the formal definition, well, I will not give formal definition, but uh, so, okay, so the problem is fixed parameter tractable if uh, it, uh, with the parameter k, if it can be solved in time f function of k times some polynomial of the input size. 
So, uh, and this function f of k, if you speak about anti-complete problems, this uh, function f of k probably should be exponential, unless p is equal to p, of course. Yeah. Okay, so how robust this definition, let, let's just see. So what's the difference is, um, Yes, so first of all, let's see, we have two parameterized uh, algorithms. One algorithm uh, where the running time of f of k times polynomial, and then uh, f of k plus some polynomial. So, so what is better, so if I want to make some definitions which will be quite robust, right? It makes sense probably to, to, to look at, at the situation. So if this type of running times are different, and usually, yes, this running time definitely is, is uh, better because we just take sum of two functions rather than the product, right? So this is usually better. But let's just, uh, if, if you try to make a definition, so yes, definitely, so, well, for reasonably growing functions f and uh, polynomial here, so uh, this is uh, like that. But on the other hand, uh, if I take a look, uh, if I take the square of f, f of k and square of m, then again, for reasonable functions, it's always at least the product. Right? So if I want to make the definition of fixed parameter tractability, I shouldn't care probably if there is a product here or if there is a sum here. It's, it's uh, at the end, it will be the same thing. So, and, and also people don't distinguish multiplicative uh, FPT or additive FPT. As you see, it doesn't make much sense here. But uh, the difference between n to the k and uh, 2 to the k uh, is quite huge. So if, uh, so yes, if you, if you don't uh, like this uh, terminology, linear uh, algorithms for NP-complete problems, so the other argument can be that, okay, so this function is polynomial for every constant k, but this function, for example, is polynomial for k equal to log n. So this means that if you have this algorithm, you just can handle larger problems or more general problems. So, so. And again, you can say, uh, why should I care if I can solve it for constants or for log n? But again, so we are, we are, we are playing with NP-complete problems, so at the end, there will be no any good algorithm for them at, at the end, anyhow. So if you want to solve them, exactly. Okay, so this is, uh, that was the classes XP and FPT. <laughs> and uh, of course, the first natural questions are all problems in XP or in FPT. And of course, the answer is no, right? Because uh, take your favorite, okay, one of your favorite problems, graph colorings. And so I have a graph. I have a, now again integer k. And I ask if graph g is properly k colorable. What means graph is properly k colorable? I color the vertices of the graph into k colors. And any two adjacent vertices should have different colors. Right, so this is a classical k coloring problem. And this problem is NP complete for, so c coloring is already NP complete. So if I pick up the parameter as the number of colors, the chromatic number of the graph, the problem cannot be FPT and it cannot be XP because there's no polynomial time algorithm solving the problem for k equal to three. Right, so this is a uh, was ill set problem. So there's uh, XP algorithm for this problem will be polynomial time for k equal to three, and then it means that p is equal to p. And uh, what, what is the, how, how do you decide what is the parameter? Oh, that's uh, that's that's that. that, that. I, can, I can say okay, parameter No, no, that, this is a, that, this, this is this is a very good. No, this is a very good question, and I will come to that. But it's, it's, the answer is not simple, and I will come to that because it's also kind of philosophical. What is the parameter of your problem, right? So the only thing is so far is say that there are problems if you pick up an incomplete problem and you are uh, quite uh, house and you, you you're, no, no, you're not careful with the choice of the parameter, you end up with uh, something which is, doesn't make any sense, right? So, but uh, look, so definitely the choice of the parameter is a very important thing, right? So this is a, okay, so what is the picture so far? So we have, right? So we have a class of problems which are solvable in polynomial time for every fixed parameter. And inside of this class, we have the problems FPT. 
So let's say this vertex color, uh, and there is a life outside of this, for example, like a graph coloring parameterized by the number of colors. And uh, the natural question is uh, if any, uh, any life happening here, right? So, so far I told you there is a life here, vertex color. There is a life outside here, graph coloring. But are there problems which are uh, XP but not FPT, right? Okay, so I just look at all problems in the world, right? For any parameter? No, no, look, uh, so when I speak about parameterized problem, now I have an uh, input and I also have some parameter. So, for example, if I have a vertex cover parameter, uh, and, the number, and, and the size of the solution, this is one problem to me. And if I have a uh, vertex cover and, for example, the parameter is the maximum degree in the graph, that's another problem to me, right? So, uh, this is uh, always uh, comes in, in the pair. And then, so the question is if there is any life uh, beyond. FPT, but inside XP. And of course the answer is yes. So for example, here is the problem called independence. So graph, again, graph G into JK, and I ask if there is a vertex set of size at least K, such that no H has endpoint in this set. Right? So this is uh, the problem. It's uh, very similar to vertex cover, and when you have the first course on algorithms, so you usually your professor explain you, okay, if I prove that click is an NP complete, this is an independent set, an independent set is the same as vertex cover, I just take, so uh, uh, every set which is a vertex cover, its complement is independent set in the graph, right? So these things are, are dual. But uh, that's uh, in the classical complexity. So what we know, we know that we can solve this problem in time n to the k, k squared, this is just a brute force, right? I just try everything. I can and I check if the algorithm, but if it's FPT, we don't know. So there is, we don't know any algorithm which will be fixed parameter tractable for this problem. And actually, uh, even if we say no, right, what will be a reasonable way to prove that there is no FPT algorithm for this specific problem? Uh, Or maybe just, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, if, uh, if I try, yeah. so, so say if uh, I would be able to show for sure that there's no FPT algorithm for independent set, what would it imply? What do you think? Did you see there was a completely uh, stupid movie about how some guys from MIT I think from MIT, how they solve tribal and salesman problem in polynomial time, and how CAA grabbed them. No? Yeah, so ne never see this movie, it's completely rubbish, but still, so if, if, if you would be, for example, show that uh, you cannot solve, or, or that you can solve um, that FPT, every FPT problem is, uh, okay, that there exists some, uh, so like, like that independent set is uh, not solvable in uh, FPT time unconditionally, right? Would it imply that, so uh, is this an NP-complete problem? Would it imply that you show that there exists some NP-complete problem which is not solvable in polynomial time? Just think about this, right? Because every problem which is solvable in polynomial time is, oh, it's FPT, right? By default, right? So this, at, at least we, we, somehow we should be a bit more careful here unless we really want to hit immediately the wall of P and P, right? So that will be, okay, so what is uh, P and P, right? So in the world of P and P, we know there are problems solved in polynomial time, there is problems solved in exponential time, but there is also very interesting and nice life here, which called NP complete problems, right? So this is a, and very similar, yes, uh, oh, sorry, there's a the problem which are NP, and there is also NP complete problems, uh, which leaves uh, there, and parameterized complexity, so uh, how it started. Yes, that's uh, Downey and Fellows in 1992. They tried to define uh, or uh, to put a similar landscape for parameterized problems. So there is a XP, there is a FPT there, and uh, life outside. And actually uh, what they defined, they defined a complexity plus uh, W1 hard. 
problems. And uh, this class contains FPT. And actually, they show that independent set is W1 hard there. And actually, they also able to define the completeness class W1 complete problems. It's in, in the independent set. And uh, then, uh, but then things become uh, not so nice as a, a, a P and NP life or a world. Uh, so the, uh, it appears that if I take a dominating set, then this dominating set, uh, it's uh, most likely is not W1 hard. Uh, no, it's not, not W1 complete, but uh, it's uh, most like uh, it's W2 complete. So there is some hierarchy. So the life is much more complicated here uh, than uh, for, for P and NP things. And there are natural problems which are have different, uh, uh, which belongs to different completeness classes. But this thing happened in 1990s. And, and while still people prove for uh, uh, that some problems are W1 hard or W2 complete. Uh, this is, uh, so the, fa the fashion changed. And also I will speak a little bit about that because uh, there are new complexity and assumptions which now uh, people use much more often than this one. Uh, and yes, and these problems are W1 hard. Okay, so now if, if you are a PhD student and your advisor gives you some problem to, to, to study and you want to do parameterized algorithms, what will be the usual flow chart for you to start with? Okay, so immediately you have a problem, you have a parameter. You, the first question you ask if the problem is solvable in polynomial time at all, right? If it's an XP. If no, you have an NP completeness for fixed K then it's no, then it's, uh, there's no reason for you to work on parameterized algorithm for this problem, right? Okay, now if the problem is polynomial time solvable, the natural thing will be to develop FPT algorithm for this problem. Okay, is it FPT? Well, if again, now it, there are tools to show that something is not FPT, if it's uh, W1 hard, again, that's probably the end of this story. And if it's yes, you are happy, right? This is like the flowchart or how life was uh, 30, 20 years ago, right? Okay, let's uh, just, uh, but now life become more and more interesting and much more complicated. Now, okay, so let's, let, let's look at a click problem. It's again, it's the same as independent set problem uh, or for four complements uh, of graphs. I have a graph G, I have an integer K and I ask if there is a set of vertices of size at least K such that every pair of vertices are adjacent. Right? It's again, it's a complete problem, and this problem can be solved in n to the k times by brute force. Is the problem FPT? Well, uh, we think that's no, right? Because uh, uh, what, uh, suppose that I have FPT algorithm for click, right? Then I also have FPT algorithm for independent set, right? Because what I do, I take a graph, I complement the graph. Complement means I take every H becomes non-H and every non-H becomes an H and then click here is independent set here. Right, so if I know how to find click, I also know how to find independent set and I was just speaking that independent set is hard. Okay, so then I find independent set and then I find a click here and then it means that I will have a FPT algorithm for click and uh, which means that I also I have a, which means that if I have a FPT algorithm for click, I also have a FPT algorithm for independent set. This is, uh, yes, uh, can I reduce uh, independent set to vertex cover? So if I try to prove some hardness, well, uh, probably not, right? Because uh, what we know that G has independent set of size at least K, if and only if a vertex cover has a, if a graph has a vertex cover of size at most N minus K, right? Every vertex cover, uh, for every vertex cover, its complement is independent set. So the minimum vertex cover is maximum independent set, vertex cover of size at most K, independent set of size at least N minus K. And for vertex cover, we have algorithm of running time two to the k. Right? So definitely there should not be, unless we are completely stupid, right? So there should not be a reduction from independent set to vertex cover. Yes. Uh, so the, and the only thing which algorithms for vertex cover implies, it implies that independent set is solvable in time two power n minus k. But this is not FPT time when parameter is k. 
This is not FPT. Okay, now coming back to your question, a nice question about parameterization, right? So, so we believe that click is uh, hard, right? Let's just take another parameter, maximum degree in a graph. Now, what is the problem? I have a graph G of maximum degree delta, and I have integer K, and I, again, I ask exactly the same question. If there is a click of size at least K in the graph, but now I want to analyze the running time of my algorithm as the function of delta and k. And the algorithm is pretty simple. Right? So if you think for a minute about this. So if uh, I take a vertex v, right? And if there exists a clique which contains this vertex, this clique should live in the neighborhood of this vertex, right? Everything is connected there. So then my algorithm, and I, because uh, the, the, the degree of the graph is bounded, this neighborhood is also bounded. So I, I can just brute force through the neighborhood. Right, so my algorithm will be, I take any vertex, I take its neighborhood, I look for maximum click there. I found a click of size at least k, happy I am. Not, I go to another vertex, so if I didn't find the click for any vertex, I say there's no click of size k. Right, so this is the running time is uh, uh, well uh, two to the yes, and uh, two to, I, I wrote two to the delta here just because we already know how to solve vertex cover. In, we can solve click in two to the number of vertices, right? By trying all possible subsets, and because the number of vertices in the neighborhood is at most delta, this is two to the delta times n. So this is uh, this is FPT. Okay, so what we uh, learn? Okay, so if you have a. No, no. So what, what, once again, what, what, what was my argument? If I have a, uh, if some vertex v belongs to the clique of size k then all this click should live in the neighborhood of this vertex. Right, because it's, it's a click, so all vertices uh, in the click should be adjacent to this vertex. Right, so what I'm doing, I take a vertex, any vertex, right, and I look at its neighborhood. Look for a click there, right? It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, but, uh, so this is the parameter. So what is the kind of conclusion here? So we know that if we parameterize click by the size of the click, it's W1 hard, no F of K algorithm for this. Uh, so this click parameterized by solution size is W1 hard. And we also have a FPT algorithm parameterized by the maximum degree of time two to the delta of N. So, so it means that I take uh, one combinatorial problem and there can be many meaningful parameterization of this problem, right? And which parameterization is better? It's a hard question. So basically, uh, I don't think there is a, the right, the, the right uh, choice of the, uh, unique right choice of the parameter, right? It depends what you need, what you can do. This, this is your parameter, right? And then, Okay, so now the formal definition. Uh, now I, I, I was speaking a lot about parameterized problems. I was speaking about uh, what is a FPT, but uh, it uh, still makes sense. And it's come back to your question: What is a parameterized problem? Okay, so 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 formally, so a parameterized problem is a decision problem, and this decision problem is a subset of uh, this is uh, sigma is some alpha finite alphabet, right? So this is some string of alphabet and some integer. So parameterized problem is always a pair. Input encoded as a string plus some integer. So one concatenation of these two strings. So for example, if I have a click parameterized by the solution size, so my, the input, uh, parameterized input is uh, S and K, where S encodes a graph G, and uh, K is an integer, right? And then this is a, yeah, this, this strings belong to this language, if and only if the graph G has a click of size at least k. Right? So in, in, in classical computers or in classical computation complexity, we always view the input as a string, right? 
So now it's a, just one more step. We have a string and we have a concatenate, concatenated to the string an integer. And this is now parameterized language. Or for example, when I speak about click uh, parameterized by the maximum degree, this is again the string S delta, where S encodes a graph G and uh, an integer K, and G has a maximum degree at most delta if and only if this graph S contains a click of size at least KS. But that integer is in, in, a, in bits, in bits, in bits, it's a good question. Let, let's just think about this. So the, the way I understand the question, you, how you present the integer, is uh, you write it uh, binary or as a bitwise, right? Or a unary, unary or a binary, right? Okay, uh, look, if I write integer in unary, then very often I can solve everything in polynomial time. It's like, a, so you, usually by default, uh, I, I will always write integer as a binary. And not always. Hmm? Not always. But uh, yes, uh, not okay. Not always, but uh, like uh, for the type of combinatorial problems we are looking at, it's binary. But it's again, it's, it's a very good question because it's uh, you, you you can cheat a lot going from binary to unary. And like this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's some finite. Uh, if you if you're com comfortable with binary zero and ones, okay. it's not important because again, so it's like uh, uh, what what we what we usually uh, when we do complexity, people say, okay, it doesn't matter, right? So if this is finite alphabet and uh, our, what we're doing is still quite robust. If it's FPT for one alphabet, it's also FPT for another one. So it's uh, well, no, but it, it, it makes sense. Also, yes, what you ask, it, it definitely. Just uh, if, the, if you're more comfortable with binaries. And for binaries, you encode graphs, you encode uh, numbers, but uh, yeah. But if for some reason we need a ternary alphabet. Or, uh, yeah. I ask it because the thing can be really, really bad if the alphabet is known in the range. No, no, but I, I, I still don't know. I, I find it. Alf, alf, alphabet is finite for us. Okay. Finite, so it's like, you know, it doesn't. Yes? Yeah. I, I, so, 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 so when I was say, saying that the problem is fixed parameter tractable, then I would have to say that the problem can be, so th then, then these issues come into, into play. But so far I just speak about a uh, parameterized problem, right? And this, uh, this no, is- No, I'm not talking about the decision. I'm talking about the, the instance. Because uh, you may even receive an instance that is not valid. For example, the maximum degree of the graph is no, no, but no, no, look, yes, yes, but, but once again, so, but, but what, what, what I say, I say the strings belong to the language, if and only if the strings import the, the right, the, the yes instance of the problem. So in what you say that if some delta is some ridiculously bad, this, okay. this is, this is, this is, this, this, this thing doesn't belong to the language, so it's, uh, no, it's, not, it's not there. It's not there. Okay, so this is uh, our uh, resolution flow chart, so to, which was XP, no, and pick, and pick complete, no, yes, FPT, no, W on heart, no, yes, right? But uh, now we can add uh, a little bit more ideas uh, there. Okay, so this is examples of the problems which leave here, coloring parameterized by the number of colors, independent set parameterized by the solution size, click parameterized by solution size, vertex cover parameterized by solution size, but now, what we know, right? So, okay, so if we follow this path in this flowchart and we show that something is intractable, so like W1 hard, okay, then the natural thing will be to try a new parameter. And then again, to see if the problem is like XP and to develop this story. Uh, and actually, uh, sometimes, uh, as we saw, things can be uh, successful, like click parameterized by maximum degree. And sometimes uh, even here, right? Uh, why not try in here? So like uh, when I have a problem which is uh, 
uh, XP, uh, which is not an XP. Maybe I also should try a new parameter and try to get a better XP algorithm. So this is uh, like that. And again, so if I have a new, if I have a new uh, parameter, new algorithm, it's still again, it makes sense to go to the new parameter again, right? Here. Okay, so let's see, uh, so how this, uh, what's happening, for example, I have uh, again NP complete problem, and I try just to change uh, uh, what kind of parameter would be interesting for coloring, right? Again, so what is uh, the problem? Integer G, integer K, and I want to find, and I have a vertex cover, so I have a set X of vertices, which is a vertex cover, and I also have an integer X, which is the size of X, and now I ask uh, again if the graph G has a proper K coloring. But now I want to analyze, so I want my parameter to be X, the size of the vertex cover. Right, so I change the parameter. Parameter is X. And uh, now I will always, uh, now what, what means uh, fixed parameter tractability? Uh, uh, it means that I need algorithm of running time, some function of X, times polynomial of M. Okay, so, and this algorithm is here. Okay, so what, uh, what is, uh, what I have? I have a vertex cover in the graph. So the remaining vertices, they form independent set, right? They, there's no, again, I, I use it already several times, this argument. Vertex cover, the remaining part is independent set. Okay, now, so if uh, my, uh, the size of my vertex cover is at most k, again, k is the number of colors, minus one. I say yes, why, right? Because I can use just uh, k colors here, and use one more color here. I will have a k color here, right? I can say yes, and if x is, uh, uh, if k is smaller than x, then what I can do? I just can go through all possible colorings of X, right? I have K colors, uh, I try uh, K colors, I have a set of size X, right? So then it means that uh, I have a K to the X all possible ways of color the set of vertices, right? And then uh, for each my guess, I'm trying to, for each guess, I still have to color the vertices of an independent set, but now I can do this greedily, right? As far as I fix a color in here, I look if I have a free color for this vertex, if yes, I color, and then uh, I'm doing this. And uh, so either I find a coloring, or if for each uh, such a choice, I, I didn't manage to color the vertices of an independent set, I say, sorry, there's no coloring in key colors here. Right, so the total running time is uh, k to the x times the time I have to check, uh, to greedily check if I can extend this coloring to here. Right? So the algorithm is clear? Yeah? Uh, which set? Uh, Yes, but uh, this set X is given to you as a part of the input. Oh. So, so uh, that's what I, 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 I wrote this uh, ex ex explicitly. So I really need this uh, as a, so this is a part of the input, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and not, not in this situation, right? Because in the, we already know how to find the vertex cover in, in also in parameterized time. So, uh, so we can find it in time like two to the X. Right? So in this situation, I still, I, I wrote it just explicitly, just uh, because, uh, as you say, it's not always uh, clear how to find the set. But for vertex cover, it doesn't matter, but also this is why I still I, I wrote it as a, explicitly. Yes? Ah, no, no, I'm just saying, yeah. Okay. Okay, so then the running time of this algorithm is just the number of guesses, the number of all possible colorings of this set. And this is, uh, actually, this is FPT now. Okay, and uh, even a bit more exotic uh, situation. So, so far, so when I was talking about vertex cover, so the only situation was, the only parameter was the size of the solution size of the vertex cover. But let me just consider this 
at first glance exotic parameter, so mu. Mu is the size of the solution minus the size of the maximum matching in a graph. It's not so exotic if you think a little bit about this, because if I have a matching in a graph, then every edge of this matching I have to kill by at least one vertex from vertex cover. So the size of the vertex cover is always at least the size of the maximum matching in a graph. And now I'm asking if there is a matching which is not, uh, which size is uh, larger than this guarantee. So the size of the maximum matching, and this, is a, the, and, and this can be found in polynomial time, right? So this is some uh, guarantee. And then the only thing I'm asking if I can, can find vertex cover which is larger than this guarantee, or which, yes, which solution uh, uh, above this guarantee. Right? And this has become uh, even much more uh, meaningful. Why? Because uh, this uh, the number mu compared to the size of the vertex cover can be very small, right? If I take a graph which consists of uh, just a matching, then this parameter is zero here, and the, and, and the vertex cover is of the size of the matching, right? And uh, this brings to an, another parameterization. So if I have a vertex cover of size uh, at most k, and the parameter is a k minus the size of the matching, where m is the size, yeah. then, uh, and now FPT means uh, that I want the running time of uh, f of mu times polynomial of C. And actually, uh, this problem is, again, uh, there is a FPT algorithm, which is uh, way more complicated, so just solving uh, this problem in, uh, so in FPT running time. So the way uh, I can select the parameter, it uh, can be quite clever procedure. Because here, it's not just I just take any parameter of the graph. I really have to realize, first of all, that uh, the max size of the maximum matching uh, uh, is a bound for the vertex cover. And then to prove this, these things here. So, but, uh, and the people also try, try to, to develop uh, in these directions. For example, the, the other natural parameter, for example, can be, you know that for vertex cover, for example, if you write linear program relaxation of integer program vertex cover, this also will be uh, bound for the vertex cover. Why not to use solution of linear program as a guarantee for vertex cover and try to do something about this guarantee? Things like that. So there are, there, are, uh, there are a lot of research happening also here. So how to find a really good parameter and how to say something meaningful about this. But coming back to our flowchart, which is already growing, right? So we had this flowchart. Now what uh, uh, we have coloring parameterized by vertex cover. Uh, and vertex cover parameterized by the above guarantee of maximum matching. So then again, so things are search for new parameter and then the search for new parameter we can come back again for XP algorithms and try to solve these things. Okay, let's take uh, one more look at the uh, algorithm for independent set. So uh, we, I, I started from the algorithm of running time m power k algorithm which is using brute force and also we know, well, if we believe that something uh, thing in parameterized complexity assumption, FPT is not equal to W1, whatever it means so far, right? So we know that there's no algorithm, so the problem is not fixed parameter tractable. So there's no algorithm of running time F of K times some polynomial of C. But here and here, the, lower bound, the upper bound, the lower bound are quite far apart from each other. So there are a lot of uh, progress can be done in between. So can we solve independent set faster than n to the k? And actually the answer is yes, we can. So faster independent set. Uh, that uh, actually also uh, quite old and classical work of Yarek Neshetriel and Svetoslav Pollock from 1985, which says that independent set can be solved in time n power omega k over three, where omega is the fast matrix or matrix multiplication constant, right? Something between two and three, right? And uh, actually this running time is n power zero seven to the k, right? So the brute force algorithm gives you n to the k. 
And this gives you, again, the, the improvement in the exponent. And actually, uh, still, can we say anything uh, how good this algorithm is, right? Can we do something better here? Or say, no, no, there's no way of doing anything better like that. And uh, here, we, again, we hit another, another problem. Because if we speak uh, from the perspective of parameterized complexity, we, we cannot address this question. Because what parameterized complexity says, you have FPT, you have W1 hardness. And this distinguish only if you have a F of K running time or not. But now I ask the question, if I can, I have XP algorithm, can I uh, say something meaningful about the running time of XP algorithm? And there are a lot of questions on that. If you, if, if you look, so how fast you can find, for example, triangle in a graph? How fast you can find a star in a graph, right? All this, or, 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 so these problems, uh, like uh, to find a triangle in a graph, I can find it in polynomial time, trivially, right? Like in n cube. Can I find it better? Probably yes, right? Because it's like finding a click of size three. Okay, so what we have so far? So for vertex cover, uh, yes. Uh, and similar questions actually I can ask about uh, FPT algorithm. So for vertex cover, for example, I have running time to the, to the K. And the next lecture I will give you a quite simple algorithm which solves the vertex cover in uh, 1.47 to the K. So how it's, uh, you just need one idea and then things will go through here. But uh, you see again, so the improvement here is exponential. So this is a, this is a quite serious improvement. So we also know that there is no uh, polynomial time algorithm unless P is equal to for this problem. And actually people uh, were trying to improve this problem a lot and a lot. So the best uh, so far algorithm is for uh, GNR Chen and uh, Iyad Kanch which works in uh, this running time. And actually, uh, so this algorithm is already quite complicated. And actually, uh, I have a suspicion that uh, these people, they take very personally uh, this, type, this algorithm because any, if you manage to improve this running time of this algorithm, at least uh, statistically what happens, within two years, they appear with a better algorithm. So this, uh, I think they just, uh, this algorithm was already maybe 10 years old. I think they just wait until someone else improve it. Okay, but uh, so uh, improve, improve, improve. But then the question is, uh, but is there any uh, explanation or is there any way to see how far this algorithm can be improved, for example, right? Can we improve it forever or there's some limit, like some magic number here for, for which we can say, no, no, there can't be any further improvement. And, uh, but uh, I will come back to this uh, in, a, in a second. But so far, so our flowchart is the following. So we have XP algorithm, FP, FPT, and then if you have a better, if we have a FPT, maybe uh, we, we know that there's no, sorry, we have XP, we have FPT, and then if we know that there's no FPT, but there is still XP, maybe it's a good idea to try to find a better XP algorithm. Or if we have FPT, Maybe it makes sense to have to, to find to, to have a better FPT algorithm or find a new parameter. You see, so now the, so the way uh, I, I started uh, when I started uh, to tell you, I give you the problem. You, you do some work and you tell me it's W one hard. I'm unhappy, but that's life. It's FPT. Yes, you be unhappy. We write a paper. Not anymore, right? Now you have to. You can do a lot of things here. So this is the, the, the life becomes quite interesting and uh, exciting. Here. Okay, so for example, can we do a vertex cover or an independent set in time, for example, n to the 0, 1 to the k? Or maybe even in this time. So this time it looks uh, very nice. It's still exponential. But the exponent is so low that if you give me this algorithm, I would be very happy actually to use this algorithm uh, uh, because for uh, very large values of k, this algorithm will be still much better than a linear time algorithm, right? So that will be. Uh, gr great thing. Or maybe there is an algorithm of running time n to the square root of k, right? So, uh, so, so if I have a sub-exponential algorithm solving np complete problem, it still doesn't uh, show that p is equal to np. And actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, np complete problems which are solvable in sub-exponential time. So maybe independent set can be solved in sub-exponential time. 
Uh, and the same type of questions about vertex cover. Can we solve vertex cover faster and faster in this time, for example, or can we have some exponential algorithm? And here comes an, another. And again, to answer these questions, I cannot do it with the, parameter, the tools from parameterized complexity. First of all, this type of problems, I just don't know how to handle at all. And for parameterized problems, again, parameterized complexity is, is too robust, too, too, too bulky to, 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 to give answers to these questions. Because the only thing we know that the problem is fiscal meta trackable or not. But how or what is the running time of the algorithm? So this kind of fine grained complexity of this problem is uh, impossible to do with parameterized. Yes, but even yes, so but uh, yes, so but, uh, but even like if if I take uh, for example the parameter, the number of vertices in the graph, can I solve vertex cover in times to the two to the square root of n? Yeah, but that's already the problem. Vertex cover? No, 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 no. Vertex cover is NP-complete on planar graphs. Sure. And for planar graphs, if if I use lipton tarjan separation theorem. I can do it in 2 to the square root of n. So it's, 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 it's funny thing. Or for, yes, uh, and, uh, so, be, yes, uh, so it's, it, 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 so if I show that every NP-complete problem is solvable in some exponential time, that will be a very strange thing. But still, it will not imply P equal NP. And actually, uh, this is exactly the question these people ask. Uh, Rasmus Pagliasse, Ramon Paturi, and uh, actually, I don't know how the name of the uh, is. Okay. So the exponential time hypothesis. And there are several uh, formulations of exponential time hypothesis. Uh, so they, they say it's, uh, there exists epsilon such that 3 sat is not solvable in times 2 to the epsilon n. Which implies right, that the 3 sat is not solvable in some exponential time. And here is the input length. So it's already the number of, yeah, uh, number of variables, the number of clauses. At the end, uh, for, uh, I don't know, for three sides, it's uh, more or less the same. OK, and also, it's uh, the, why they call it exponential time hypothesis, right? So you know the difference between uh, conjecture and hypothesis. So what do you think is the difference? Yes, and hypothesis. Sorry, they don't believe. Okay, yes, but uh, hypothesis usually in, in physics when you don't you don't know what's happening, right? But you think, okay, that might work in hypothesis, right? And we will see what will happen from here. Maybe it's wrong. Yes, yes, exactly. Conjecture is something which you are quite convinced, which should be true, but you're just not able to show, to prove it. And uh, like P and P, this is a conjecture now, right? And uh, this is, a, they call it, and I think with uh, now after, the, it's also was like maybe 15, 20 years ago, by, the, by now it's become conjecture, but still people call it hypothesis, right? So it's, uh, it's still, uh, yes. So ETH lower bounds, uh, and then so you can use this uh, assumption uh, to show the, the quantitative uh, lower bounds for the algorithms. For example, so the, it's, it can be possible to show that assuming NTH, there exists epsilon such that there is no this type of algorithm solving vertex cover. Right? In particular, vertex cover cannot be solved in some exponential time on, on general graphs. This is a yes. And how to prove it is just to uh, take uh, the NP complete reduction for vertex cover, like from Sipser book. And just uh, go through this reduction and see, and you will see that if you're able to solve vertex cover in uh, this time, then you also will be able to solve sat, three sat in, in this running time, which will contradict ETH. Yep. Yes. And then uh, people said also develop ETH lower bounds. So, for example, uh, it was possible to show that there exists epsilon such that there's no f of k n power epsilon k time algorithm for independent set. Right, so so far we just so what W one harness implies that there's no f of k times n to the k algorithm, but now actually we're able to show much stronger bound. So this is this is just a high, 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 okay. So what are the tools? So, so this is this is the conjecture, right? Okay. And then, and then it's like, no, you, you need to, I, I will speak a little bit about that. There's a, you need to think 
uh, which is called sparsification lemma for that. Uh, and then uh, after, uh, after that, you just, what you do, you, 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 so the, the first wave of research was you just take a Gary Johnson reduction for NP complete problem, analyze it, and you notice, aha, uh -huh. what, uh, what happened in here, you can also transfer to these problems. And then uh, the second wave uh, of research was I take Gary Johnson reduction, it doesn't tell me anything. I have to design complete new reduction and things become, but, uh, but again, so conceptually, it's again uh, like a, if you prove NP hardness of the problem, you also prove it, it's, it's a, you need gadgets. That's a, it's a, yeah? What do you know about this excitement? You know, three bounds? About what? Yeah, about this excitement. Oh, that's a very good question. So, in short, uh, no one knows anything. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, yes. So basically, I would be very happy to 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 see the proof, or that we know that there exists epsilon, right? Uh, but uh, we don't know. So what, what is epsilon? I, so even like for epsilon equal to one zero 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 whatever one, this is still the, the, the exponential time hypothesis doesn't give you this bound. You need a stronger assumptions, and that's also what people are doing now. Okay, but. Uh, we're just uh, doing, going for other parameterized problem. For example, I just give you the algorithm for graph coloring for vertex cover uh, of this running time, right? So we saw this algorithm already. And Daniel Marks, uh, Sakit Starup, and Daniel Lakshtano, for example, show that uh, assuming ATH, this bound is more or less tight, right? So there is no, there exists epsilon, such that there's, there's no time algorithm of this running time for graph coloring parameterized by vertex cover. And this is quite funny thing because basically when you start looking at NP-complete problems, you can show, okay, the problem is polynomial, NP-complete. When you start doing approximation algorithms, things become much more interesting, right? Because you have approximation algorithm. And now there is a quite clever way for many problems to show that uh, the, lo the lower bound for approximation. And now the, quite the same thing happening for parameterized and for XP algorithms. I have an algorithm and now there are tools which show that this algorithm is tight. This, uh, this is, I think, uh, quite, quite nice. And this is the revised flowchart now. So uh, even if uh, I uh, obtain FPT algorithm or a beta XP algorithm, I still can plug in uh, ETH low bound and ask if my algorithm is tight. And if my algorithm is not tight, I try to come back uh, to, to, to get a better algorithm or try to do something to, 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 to establish low bounds. Uh, so this is what's happening. And then uh, again, so that's uh, Pedro coming to your question. So limitation of the ETH. So it says that there exists epsilon. So when I use ETH, I can show that there exists epsilon such that there's no this type of algorithm, right? But uh, how to distinguish between 2 to the K and 1.92 to the K? So ETH cannot be used to, uh, to show that. Okay, so there are other type of uh, assumptions and things and uh, uh, strong exponential time hypothesis, orthogonal vectors, conjectures. So now people, it's things are developing. Uh, there are a lot of different conjectures and people do a lot of different exciting things. So and now so, some commercial, of course, right? I cannot uh, finish this lecture without uh, commercial. First of all, you want to learn more things. There is a book and actually you can download it for free. So like uh, steal this book. And actually, uh, actually, we're also hiring postdocs, so if you want to learn more, so there is a, a lot of opportunities to learn more. And I uh, have to give you one exercise of the day. So exercise, I tell you that uh, Pollock and Nishatril proved that uh, click can be solved in this running time. Right? Just uh, give the algorithm. And uh, the hint for the algorithm is uh, you need to know, first of all, you need to understand how to find the click of size 3 in a graph or a triangle in a graph. And for, for, for doing this, uh, probably, you know, you have to multiply matrices, right? You take adjacency matrix of the graph, and from there, I just uh, make my mouth shut, so, uh, yes, from there, try to reconstruct the uh, algorithm, right? Any questions about uh, the lecture or the... I will put them, yes, uh, but uh, I will give them to Jose, and then uh, I, I will have no responsibility for that, right? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good, that's the end. Yeah.